and you put your elbow here, and you put your elbow here, and you put it together, and as soon as you do that, the priest goes, please stand. Okay. <laughs> we go to church together, we go to a non-denominational church, you know? We grew up in different cultures, but we also grew up in different church cultures. Like, she grew up in the Catholic church, and I grew up in the Pentecostal. <laughs> where I get my moves from. <laughs> With the choir, yeah. <laughs> <I> in <in> Chicago. <laughs> I love this guy. What is happening right now? <laughs> We made a commitment we would visit each other's churches um, when we got married, and I wasn't prepared for the work <laughs> that I was about to have. <laughs> a Catholic church, they, they got pews, and there's a pew behind you, one in front of you, they're really hard wood, and I didn't know there's equipment built in, and that's for praying. And there's not a lot of room, and my wife said, we gotta put the equipment down. Like, what is this, an Airbnb? Are we staying the night? <laughs> There's no room to put it down. <laughs> you need space for that. And we fold it down and you have to get this knee and you gotta put the knee. <laughs> I'm the kneeler. <laughs> Thank you. I started looking like the tin man. I'm like, I need oil! <laughs> Come on, priest, bring it over. <laughs> need the oil, I'm cramping up. <laughs> And then you gotta get this knee. <laughs> and you put your elbow here, and you put your elbow here, and you put it together. And as soon as you do that, the priest goes, please stand. Okay. <laughs> please kneel. Oh, we're going down? That was a short prayer. I was prepared. I got bad knees. Hold on. Please stand. Okay. Please kneel. Oh, we're going down again. Please stand. My wife's like, we gotta kneel. I'm working on it. <laughs> Please stand. Please stand. Please sit. Priest goes, please sit. My wife's like, why aren't you standing? He said, I can take a break. Please stand. Please sit. Oh, we're doing crunches. It's like a Zumba class I didn't sign up for. And then we went to my church that night, the Pentecostal. leg syndrome. <laughs> I have no idea I do this. I just walk in place. You might think I'm nervous. I'm not. I didn't even know I did this to the other day. This lady came up and said, excuse me, sir. The restrooms are over there. <laughs> the cool thing about this, if you take one step forward, it looks like you're salsa dancing. <laughs> it's no longer a disability. You got moves, you know? <laughs> away from me. They stood back. They let me go. 
You gotta understand, I'm originally, it's funny, he says Branson, Missouri. I'm originally from Chicago. Do I sound like I'm from Branson? <laughs> and I know you came in, you see my name, I-L-O. You're like, what does that mean? Is he J-Lo? What is that? <laughs> J-E-L-L-O, what does that mean? My real last name's Italian. It's like Danny I-L-O. The A is silent, it's A-I-E-L-L-O. I had to take out every other letter. Because if you Google my real last name, the only thing that comes up is mafia members. <laughs> and I didn't think that would be good for my career. <laughs> and the A silent, last time I did a show with my real last name, they introduced me like this. Please welcome to the stage, Joey Ayatollah. <laughs> What got with tea for 500? <laughs> my, um, my, my great grandfather came from Italy to Ellis Island, came from Italy, New York, New York to Chicago, and then into Wisconsin into witness protection. It's a complicated story. <laughs> I don't want to get deep into it, but my grandfather, as a kid, he used to say, I love you. It's just that you got that face. <laughs> Like, what's wrong with my face? He goes, look in the mirror. What do you see? My face. He goes, that's the problem. If you got that face, that means your kids are gonna have that face that could get you into trouble. Change your face. And he walked away from me. And I didn't know what he meant until years later I get a call from my manager and he goes, we got a problem. I wanted to get your domain name with your real last name. Uh, but another Joey Aiello, Joey A-I-E-L-L-O, popped up. I'm like, oh, does he look like me? I'm like, well, you look like him. <laughs> so I went on to Wikipedia, and he's listed in Wikipedia, and this is what Wikipedia said. Joey Aiello, mastermind, several unsuccessful attempts to assassinate Al Capone. I kept going back to that first part, mastermind. <laughs> Several unsuccessful attempts. I was like, wow, that sounds like my comedy career. <laughs> we have so much in common, this guy. He became a gangster, came closest to killing Capone. I became a comedian. I come close to killing on stage. <laughs> Some nights I don't, I'm, on, I'm a mastermind at not doing it sometimes. <laughs> it's my special. I'll just wait. I don't care. <laughs> Listen to her. He's so special. <laughs> and then she did that number. <laughs> She's calling me special. <laughs> oh, that was behind you. And trying to hold it in, and it comes out of the shoe. <laughs> comes out of the shoe. The ladies are, I'm not gonna laugh that much tonight. <laughs> comes out. <laughs> but listen, I've never smoked, I've never drank, I've never done drugs, which I think is a good thing. Could you imagine me on trucks? <laughs> Even the drug dealers are like, don't sell it to him. <laughs> what are you, crazy? <laughs> He's special. <laughs> and I'm a Christian and my friends find out, and they're like, oh, you're a Christian. You're one of those goody two shoes. I'm like, you should be happy. I'm Joey Ayala. I could be out there whacking people. <laughs> Unsuccessfully. <laughs> Don't mess with me tonight. 
If you like this show, you tell everybody you know. If you don't like it, don't you tell anybody you know. You hear me? I'm truly I up. Remember the name. I'm sorry, you told me not to go that way. I'm supposed to stay in the box of emotions. I mean, that's my testimony at church when I go on Sunday. I've never been tased. <laughs> it's a miracle! So I get a call from my agent again, years later, and he calls me and he goes, guess where you're moving? I go, LA? He goes, no. New York? No. Hawaii? No. This goes on for hours. <laughs> Finally, he goes, Branson, Missouri. I go, really? He goes, are you excited? I go, why not? He goes, nobody else wants to go. <laughs> I didn't know what was in Branson. I moved there, and there's a bunch of tribute artists. I didn't know what that was. I'm a stand-up comic. It's the guys who dress up like Elvis. But they're not. <laughs> I started making friends with these guys. I never had a friend who was Elvis, but he's not. Oh, look, it's Elvis. No, that's Jerry. Oh, is that Greg? No, he's Johnny Cash on the weekends. <laughs> and I vowed I would never become, you know, because when you're a stand-up, it's like, oh, that's hack. You know, you use props, that's hack. You know, becoming something you're not, that's hack. I'm not going to do that. But I wasn't doing well. <laughs> My show wasn't doing well, and I needed the money, and um, <laughs> someone come up to me and offered me a proposal. They said, you look like one of the characters from our favorite show, because this is a small town, and we feel like we're Mayberry. <laughs> and you look like one of the characters from the Andy Griffith show. And I said, Barney Fife? They said, no. <laughs> Andy Griffith? No. They said, you look like the town drunk Otis Campbell. <laughs> I heard my granddad, he's got that face! <laughs> and they start telling me that they want to fly me around the U.S. to small towns in America that think they're Mayberry for Mayberry festivals, and they're going to pair me up with the Barney Fife impersonator, and that after the festival, we're going to do what's called a pub crawl, and I, as Otis, is going to walk real drunk people but I don't even drink. I'm like, I'm not dressing up like a drunk. They're like, we'll pay you this much. Okay, let's try. <laughs> we get done with the festival, and some, the promoter says, you know, the next town over, the guy who owns that bar is a huge Otis Campbell fan. Go in there and don't break character no matter what happens. I remember I walked into the bar. First thing I said was, Hey, what are all these people doing here? What is this, an AA meeting? <laughs> I was not prepared for what the bartender says. She goes, that's it! You're cut off! I go, I haven't even started yet. And she goes, get out. And I go, I know, and I'm not wanted. <laughs> and I'm walking out of a real bar, 100% sober. <laughs> Only the second time I performed this in public, I'm thinking I'm an amazing actor. I just got kicked out of a real bar, and I don't even drink. <laughs> And I had these posters made up because our show was called the Barney Fife Fully Loaded Show. I named it because Barney Fife's fully loaded. He's got the one bullet. And Otis is fully loaded because he's always fully loaded. <laughs> I figure I'll give it to her 
We'll all laugh, we'll realize it's a joke, but when I went out to my car, I dropped my keys and the people in the patio thought I was a real drunk, so they called the real police. <laughs> and it was a small town in Kentucky, and it didn't take long for them to get there. And it wasn't Andy. <laughs> Just a young cop who doesn't know who Otis Campbell is. <laughs> I'm looking through my car, pitch black in the bar parking lot, 11 o'clock at night. I'm looking for the rack cards. I'm like, I could really use the light, and they started flashing. I'm looking back at the restaurant like, oh, someone's in big trouble. I have no idea they're there for me. They shine that bright white light on me like I just broke out of prison. And the light is so bright, I can't see anything. I'm looking into the light, and the light started talking to me. <laughs> and it said, get on the ground. And I decided to talk back to the light. I said, I know this Campbell! <laughs> and the light said, we don't care who you are. Get on the ground, and I wasn't moving fast enough, so they came up to help. <laughs> and they grabbed me, and they threw me on the hood of that car. Bam! And for the first time in my career, I'm thinking about breaking character. <laughs> Every time I went to get up, they threw me back down again. He pulls me to my feet, he goes, how much have you had to drink tonight? <laughs> You're not gonna believe this, officer. <laughs> Nothing. And he goes, we'll see about that. He pulls out a breathalyzer. This is a true story. I don't know anything about alcohol. He tells me to blow into it. He gets upset, he looks down, he goes, you just blew a .000. <laughs> I go, is that bad? <laughs> then I thought back to my special ed days. I was like, point zero, zero, zero. Oh, this is horrible. I didn't even score a point. <laughs> At least I got a 33 on my math test. <laughs> I failed it, but we got some numbers up there. He goes, we gotta try it again. I'm like, we try it again and again. That's when another cop comes. This one's different. He gets out of the car. He pulls his handcuffs out and he goes, look, it's Otis Campbell. And I go, praise the Lord. <laughs> Someone actually knows who I am. He has his handcuffs out. He goes, you mind putting these on and getting the back seat of my car so I can take a picture for the Sarge? <laughs> He's also a big fan. I'm in the bar parking lot with my hands behind my back taking glamour shots. <laughs> and the moral of the story is I didn't get tased that night. <laughs> and the Kentucky State Police has confirmed me as the only Otis Campbell tribute artist <laughs> to not go to jail. All right. Pretty awesome. My wife is from the South. She's from the Deep South. She's from Ecuador. <laughs> if you're not laughing, it's probably because you don't know where Ecuador is. Don't <laughs> believe me. You're right, I don't. <laughs> it's on a map, okay. Oh, man. I remember when I, I, I met my wife. my wife. My wife is beautiful. She's very petite. Uh, when we first got married, uh, she, when we met, she was a size zero. And the first year of marriage, she's like, I'm getting fat, I'm a size one. <laughs> I was like, you just scored a point. <laughs> I'm like, if we're sports teams, I'm winning. It's 38 to one. <laughs> now it's 48 to two. <laughs> I got the ring, I'm a champion. <laughs> been married 11 years, you know? But I, yeah, going on 12. I meet couples that are married a lot longer than me. They always blow my mind because I met a couple married 39 years. I said, ma'am, what's your secret? 
She said, we've never fought in 39 years of marriage. I'm like, what's your secret? She goes, he was in the Navy for 37. <laughs> I started taking notes. And when me and my wife got I me, mean, I didn't think we'd ever fight. I was wrong. I think men and women in general, we just have different tempers. The way we process anger is just different. Me personally, I have an amnesia temper. <laughs> I'll get upset and forget why I'm mad in the same sentence. I'll be like, you know what? I'm hungry. It's funny because I travel and I'm on the road. I like to, I like to wear shorts. Trying to flex <laughs> it's, to... <laughs> it's cramping up. <laughs> and I go in for the free breakfast. And I, the other day I was in the free breakfast, an older lady in Memphis was stocking the muffins. I walked in with my shorts and she goes, Ooh, child, look at your legs. You got some good looking calves. And before I had a chance to say thank you, she goes, up top, not so much. <laughs> Like, ma'am, I can explain this. We just had a baby. Three years ago. I didn't have this when I was single. Like, I can look out. I see the single guys. Your chest is up here. You stick it out because you have to stick out your chest to impress the ladies. What's up, girl? You have no idea you'll get married someday and get a second chest. And it's a little lower. You don't have to stick it out, it sticks out. It's the benefits of marriage, just like an ottoman for your arm. Now I got kids of my own, and I got an eight-year-old and a two-year-old. A two-year-old is God's revenge for what I... Think I have energy? Got a two-year-old. I'm 42, I've got a two-year-old. <laughs> and when I was in school, I couldn't stand it, but as a parent, I absolutely love school. <laughs> I love everything that ends in school. <laughs> Public school, summer school, Sunday school. I just will never send my kids to homeschool, never. <laughs> I ain't got time for that. <laughs> I've become my dad because I got in an argument with a friend, you know. He's like, I like to take my kids to school instead of putting them on the bus. Why would you waste your own gas money? <laughs> bus isn't everybody's number one choice. It's the substitute teacher of transportation. <laughs> bus fell backwards as sub. <laughs> but it gets the job done. And in my state, it comes to the house for free. It's like a free Uber. It's a little clunky and it's big and when it pulls up, it sounds like a spaceship. It's like, <laughs> And the door is open. <laughs> And I'm waving. I'm so happy because I get so much work done when they go off to school. So many Netflix series. <laughs> I get to finish watching. I love September when the buses start coming through the neighborhood. Every parent turns into a little kid who sees an ice cream truck. <laughs> All the parents are standing outside. I hope he stops at my house. <laughs> When a little kid sees an ice cream truck, he chases it. When a parent sees a school bus, he grabs a kid and he chases it. <laughs> Please don't leave him! I know he only has one shoe. We'll send the rest of the clothes after gym class. Just take him now. 
I didn't come from a poor family. My family was on a budget. I knew my dad was on a budget. His big thing was, hey, why don't you buy that? I can build it. <laughs> don't you buy it? I can build it. It's like, Dad, it's great. I just really don't want a bike made out of wood. <laughs> what up, guys? It's gonna be a while. <laughs> Everything was wood. There's no rubber tubing on my wheel. It's all wood. The wood's rubbing up against the concrete, causing friction. I get home, I start crying because my bike's on fire. <laughs> Dad's like, don't you worry, I'll build you a new bike out of oak wood. <laughs> it's a lot stronger this time, and it doesn't burn as fast. <laughs> it took him two years to build the first one. <laughs> and that was my dad saying, you know, it's like, Dad, Where's the new bike you said you're gonna build? He's like, I'm working on it! <laughs> now that sounds like he's yelling, but he's not yelling. He's just happy. <laughs> he's happy. I wanted to play the drums. My dad's like, you don't need a drum set. I can build you a drum set. <laughs> he was right, I don't need one. I don't need tracks or a band. It's just me and it's you. And yes, I would prefer a crowd with rhythm, but maybe I don't have that. Oh, that's nice. Sometimes you just gotta work with what you got. Work with what you got. Come on, just work with what you got. Come on, just work with what you got. Come on, just work. Is this your husband? The one that's not clapping? <laughs> just work with what you got. Come on, just work with what you got. Come on, just work with what you got. Yeah. Dance solo! <laughs> Come on, just work with what you got. Come on, just work. Last week, I wanted to spend time with my kids. I went roller skating, and another kid ran into me. I fell back, put my hand, I dislocate my elbow and my wrist. There's a cast under here. I don't care if I got one hand. I was gonna come to Prompha. <laughs> and nothing, not even you, sir, is gonna stop me. <laughs> Just work with what you 